the KNLS neighbors algorithm is a simple easy to implement supervised machine learning algorithm that can be used to solve both classification and regression problems now a supervised machine learning algorithm is one that relies on labeled input data to learn a function that produces an appropriate output when given a new unlabeled data the knl algorithm assumes that similar things exist in close proximity in other words similar things are near to each other we can relate this definition to something like birds of a feather flock together now notice in the image that most of the time similar data points are close to each other the knn algorithm hinges on this assumption being true enough for the algorithm to be useful knn captures the idea of similarity sometimes called distance proximity or closeness with some mathematics we might have learned in our childhood calculating the distance between points on a graph there are many ways to calculate distance and one might one way might be preferable depending on the problem that we are trying to solve however we are going to use something called as the euclidean distance which is a popular and a familiar choice let's see how the knn algorithm works in action first we load the data set next we initialize the number of neighbors which we want which is k in our case now for each example in our data set we'll calculate the distance between the query example and the current example from the data the distance here being the euclidean distance next we add the distance and the index of the example to an ordered collection uh, for example a dictionary now sort the ordered collection of distances and indices from smallest to largest in ascending order by the distances now let's pick the first k entries from the sorted collections get the labels of the selected k entries now if you want to find the mean then that is the regression problem and if you find the mode it's a classification k and algorithm now let's talk about choosing the right value of k to select the k that's right for your data we run the knn algorithm several times with different values of k and choose the k that reduces the number of errors we encounter while maintaining the algorithm's ability to accurately make predictions when given data it hasn't seen before knn has the following advantages the algorithm is simple and easy to implement and we'll see that in the next video there is no need to build a model tune some hyper parameters or even make additional assumptions it is a very simple and straightforward algorithm the algorithm is also versatile it can be used for classification regression and search as well one of the major disadvantages of the algorithm is that it gets significantly slower as the number of examples or variables increase coming to this let's talk about the applications of knn knn can be useful in solving problems that have solutions that depend on identifying similar objects right the nearest neighbors or the nearest similar objects an example of using this would be in recommender systems which is an example application of knn search now uh, at a large scale this would look like recommending products on amazon or articles on medium movies on netflix although we can be certain that uh, these companies they all use more efficient means of making recommendations due to enormous volume of data and when you have an enormous volume of data that is when knn starts to suffer so that was a very brief introduction of how the knls algorithm works now for the next video we have two choices we can either use the scikit-learn library to import the knn model or use it directly and we can also make our own model from scratch so we'll actually implement the k nearest neighbors algorithm using second learn so the k nearest neighbors algorithm is a type of supervised machine learning algorithm knn is extremely easy to implement in its most basic form and yet performs quite complex classification tasks it is a non parametric learning algorithm which means that it does not assume anything about the underlying data This is an extremely useful feature since most of the real world data doesn't really follow any theoretical assumptions for example linear scalability or uniform distribution Let's start implementing the knn algorithm using scikit learn now We are going to use the famous iris dataset for our knn example The dataset consists of four attributes sepal width sepal length petal width and petal length These are the attributes of specific types of iris plant 
the task is to pre predict the classes to which these plants belong. There are three classes in the data set Iris setosa, Iris versicolor, and Iris virginica. Let's start the implementation by importing some libraries. So we need to import numpy as np, import matplot lib.pyplot as plt and import pandas as pd for data handling. Now let's import the data set into a notebook and then into our pandas data frame. So here we have the URL from which we can access the data. The URL will also be in the description. So we assign some names to the columns of a data set and we read the data set into the pandas data frame. To see what the data set actually looks like, let's execute the following script dataset.head. And we can see the first five rows of our data set now. The next step is to split a data set into its attributes and labels. To do so, let's write the following script. So execute dataset.alloc dot values. Y is equal to the same thing, but instead of minus one, it's going to be four because it's the last column. And let's fix this, and we are good. The x variable here contains the first four columns of the data set or the attributes, while the y contains the labels. To avoid overfitting, we will divide our data set into training and test splits, which gives our which gives us a better idea as to how our algorithm performed during the testing phase. This way, our algorithm is tested on unseen data as it would be in a production application. To create training and testing splits, let's execute the following script. So let's import the test train model from sklearn. And let's define some variables. So x test y train and y test is equal to test train split. That's a very big function name. X, y, and the test size is 0.2 or 20%. wait for it to run so that we can see some so test train split cannot be imported let's see what the error is no so it's train test split my bad That makes much more sense. I get it now. And we're good. So now the above script splits the data set into 80% train data and 20% test data. This means that out of total 150 records, the training set will contain 120 records and the test set contains 30 of those records. Now, before making any actual predictions, it is always a good practice to scale the features so that all of them can be uniformly evaluated. The gradient descent algorithm, which is used in neural network training and other machine learning algorithms, also converges faster with normalized features. So let's write the script for normalization now. SKL learn pre processing import standard scalar and the scalar equal to an object so standard scalar and let's fit it now or get a fit x underscore train and let's x train is equal to scalar dot transform 
x frame and x underscore test is equal to scalar transform for test. And again, I think I've made a mistake with the spellings. Pre processing standard scalar. I'm sorry. Yes. Now let's fit the KNN algorithm to the data set. It is extremely straightforward to train the KNN algorithm and especially make prediction out of it when using the scikit-learn library. So let's import our model from scikit-learn. So sklearn dot neighbors import k neighbors classifier. And let me just make sure that the spelling is right now. So that we don't have any more errors. So k neighbors classifier and the classifier is equal to again the same name class. And let's say we want five neighbors. Let's fit the classifier now. Okay, fit not get for x train and y train. So the first step here was to import the k and n classifier class from the sklearn neighbors library. Uh, in the second line, we initialize the class with one parameter that is the n neighbors. This is basically the value for the k. There is no ideal value for k and this selected after testing and evaluation. However, to start out, phi seems to be the most commonly used k and n algorithm. The final step is to make predictions on our test data. So y pred is equal to classifier dot predict for x test. Now let's evaluate the algorithm and see how good it performs. For evaluating an algorithm, confusion matrix, precision recall and F1 score are the most commonly used metrics. All of these can be found in the sklearn.metrics module. So from sklearn.metrics import classification report confusion matrix and let's print them now so for y test and y predicted and also print the confusion matrix to see the matrix and the same parameters y test and y red and here we can see all the metrics which we need to evaluate our algorithm and how it performs so this was a very basic implementation of k nearest neighbors and after this we can actually go on kegel and uh, download a real life data set and actually perform and see how KNN performs on a real life data set. Thank you.